Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to be working in one of my upstairs bathrooms to replace the outlets in here with GFCIs to bring it up to modern standard. Now technically my house is exempt from this policy because it was built before the code required the GFCIs to be in bathrooms. But because it is a safety concern that I have due to the fact that the outlet is so close to the sinks up here, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade it to the modern code. Now a fun little fact that we learned while working on the house is that when we did the garage remodel, there is one GFCI in the garage and we happened to end up tripping it at one point and we realized later on that the outlets upstairs in this bathroom were actually out. So these are technically GFCI protected, but they're protected by a GFCI that's essentially over 100 feet away in the garage and it becomes a real hassle if that were to trip because you lose power here and when you realize that it's tripped, you have to walk all the way down to the garage to turn it back on. So to eliminate that one controlling these outlets, I'm gonna replace both the outlets here with the GFCIs and then I will take them off the load of the one in the garage. Okay, so you've probably interacted with a GFCI at some point in your house, but you may not know what it stands for or how it actually works. The GFCI stands for Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter. What does that actually mean though? So we're gonna start with kind of the easiest part of it, which is the circuit interrupter. So the easiest way to explain this is simply think of a light and a light switch. If you just had power running from your panel directly to your light with nothing in between, then that light would be on all the time. We install the light switch to be a circuit interrupter essentially. By flicking it on and off, I can control whether or not the light is on or off. So by turning the light switch off, I stop the flow of electricity to the light. Technically, at that point, I could handle the light and not be electrocuted. Now, of course, I always want to turn it off at the breaker to be sure I'm completely safe, though. So that's essentially what the circuit interrupter does in the GFCI. It turns off the power. Now, what is a ground fault? A ground fault is any way that electricity finds a path to the ground that it was not intended for. So typically, when electricity needs to go to ground, with your outlets or your light switches, it follows the ground screw to the ground wire, which goes back to your electrical panel, which has been grounded somewhere at the house. Now, for our sake, a ground fault would typically involve us as a person becoming the new ground. So somehow you've encountered a damaged portion of the outlet, like a damaged wire, and by touching it, you have become the ground. Electricity flows for you to get to the ground. Now, of course, this involves being electrocuted, possibly suffering burns, possible death or serious injury. So this is something that the ground fault circuit interrupter helps avoid. By turning off the power, it avoids you being seriously electrocuted. Now, you will still get electrocuted a little bit. You'll get a small shock, but it won't be something life-threatening because it turns off, it flips that switch, so fast that it stops serious injury. Now, how fast? Well, faster than you can blink, essentially 1 40th of a second fast. So really fast. And the way this works is it detects a difference in electricity flow. So when, electro when electricity is flowing through your power lines, through your cables, there's a certain flow to it. Think of like water pressure. If you turn on your sink to max pressure, it's going to continuously flow at that pressure. But if I were to suddenly go and turn the handle down a little bit, there's a difference in flow. Same thing with electricity. When it detects a difference in flow of that electricity, it flips the switch and interrupts the flow, shutting it off so that it can stop wherever that electricity was trying to go to. GFCI placement throughout the home is dictated by the National Electrical Code. Now, if your house was built before a particular part of the code was adopted, then of course you are exempt, like I am, with the bathroom portion. Now, if you want to update to the latest part of the code, then you're going to have to uh, get the code, look at what the local code requirements are for you as well, and see where you are lacking GFCIs are. Now, common locations for GFCIs throughout your home is basically anywhere that involves water. So bathrooms, laundry rooms, the kitchen, kitchen countertops, and within six feet of the kitchen sink, and then essentially any outlet on the outside of the house is going to be required as well. There are some other locations as well that you can read right here. Installing a GFCI can be a little more complicated than your standard outlet. Now on the surface, the difference is very simple to see. So your standard outlet just has the two outlet plugins and on your GFCI in between your two outlets, you've got two buttons. One's going to be reset and one is test. Now this works 
very simply. So if I want to test the outlet to make sure that the GFCI works, because they can wear out over time, and I want to make sure that the safety feature is still working, then I press the test button. At this point, essentially, it's flicking that switch inside, which turns off the power. So the power cannot come out through the, the plugs, through the outlets, and go into whatever it is that you've plugged into. So if you had, say, a nightlight in here, I press the test button, that nightlight is going to go off instantly, even though I did not turn the power off back at the circuit breaker. By pressing reset, I'm essentially flicking that switch back on, allowing power to go back into that nightlight. While the surface between a normal outlet and a GFCI may not be that different, it's when you get to the back that it gets a little more complicated as far as actually hooking up for wiring. So this is your standard outlet. And when we turn to the side, you'll see that I've got two screws here, plus my ground, and then on the other side I've got two more. Now, your gold ones are your hot wires, and your silver ones are for your neutral wires. Your green or sometimes black is for your ground. It's usually on its own at the bottom of the outlet. So if I wanted to hook this up, I would simply attach my black wire to a gold terminal, my neutral wire, or white wire to a silver terminal, and then my green wire or bare copper wire is typically how your ground is, and that would go to the green or black screw down at the bottom of the outlet. At that point, when I turn the power back on, this whole outlet has power. Now, it can get a little more technical if you wanna do some different things with this outlet, but on the basic level, that's as easy as it gets. For a GFCI, it's a little bit different. When I turn it to the side, you'll see I've got one silver terminal, and I do have one down here, and it's currently covered by tape. On the bottom is my ground, and on the other side, I have a hot, and then another one covered by tape. Now, the way the GFCI works is that the top on this particular GFCI, the top is what they call line, and that is power in. So my power that's coming into the outlet would go onto the line terminal. Now, if I happen to have more than one set of wires in there, then that set, if I wanted it to, would connect down to what we call load. Now, anything on the bottom ones on the load will be protected by the GFCI. So if the GFCI were to trip and it shuts off the power, then everything that's connected on its load will also turn off. So basically everything downstream of it will now be off and there will no longer be any power at those outlets. Once I reset the GFCI, the power would come back on. Now, because you can have it protected under load, you can also choose to have it not protected. So your GFCI really has about three different ways that it can be wired. And this is where it gets a little more complicated than your standard outlet. So we're gonna get into that right now. Step one, turn off the power at the breaker. Okay, now that the power's off, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the faceplate. Next, I've got two screws that hold the old outlet into the wall. So I'm going to loosen these. And now I can remove the outlet and get access to the wires. With the outlet pulled out from the wall, I can now identify how many cables are coming into the box. And I have two cables total, one here and one right there, totaling six wires. So two hots, two neutrals, and two grounds. The grounds have been tied together and then a pigtail has been brought off of them so that only one ground wire is coming up to the outlet itself. Now what this tells me is that I have a line and a load in here. So I have a hot wire or a hot cable I should say and then I have a cable that's transferring that power down to another outlet. Now I was hoping that one of the outlets in this bathroom would be the end of the line meaning that there would only be one cable coming in and there would be uh, there wouldn't have a second cable, a load cable going out of it. Now what I do have in this bathroom is I have two cables in both of these. Now I do know where the end of the line is. It's in my other bathroom. It's currently that outlet is out and theoretically since none of the other outlets are out up here, that is the end of the line. So we're going to go over to that bathroom and we're going to start with the installation there because it will be the easiest one to explain. Now it is important though that if you have four cables, like or a total of uh, two hots and two neutrals, you do need to identify which one is the line and which one is the load. So we're gonna come back and explain that after we do the installation in the other bathroom. 
All right, this is what I was looking for. This is the final outlet on this line. So this only has one cable coming in with just the three wires, my standard one hot, one neutral, and one uh, ground wire. So I now know um, that I have at least four outlets that are on this line. The one GFCI in the garage, and then the two in the Jack and Jill bathroom, and then currently the end of the line is right here. This is gonna be a very easy hookup, so if you pull out your old outlet, if you're replacing it with a GFCI, and you just have um, the one cable with only the three wires, this is gonna be a very quick and easy hookup, and we're gonna show this one first. So first thing I'm gonna do is, uh, my wires are plugged into the back of my receptacle, so I could use a flat blade screwdriver, press in on it, and pull it out. If you want to conserve wire, I've got plenty of wire here, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut them because it's much faster. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with the ground since I've got plenty of ground wire there. Okay, now the old one's out of the way. Now I just need to strip off some cable. So for your standard one cable, three wire hookup, all I'm gonna do is take my black wire to my line terminal and it says line on the back. And I'm gonna go to the gold terminal because that is for hot. And then I will take my white wire, hook it up to my silver terminal because that is for the neutral. And then my bare copper or if you have a uh, green wire, that's your ground and it's gonna go to the green screw terminal on the bottom. Okay, that's my hot. There's my neutral. My ground is on. I'm gonna go ahead and give them a tug, make sure that they are secure, not coming out, which they are. Now I'm going to leave the yellow sticker on because it covers the load terminals. If you read the instructions for your GFCIs, because they usually come with them to help explain, they will say to do this. It's just a safety precaution thing. And at this point, we're just gonna put the outlet back in. Okay, I had to take a brief second to trim some drywall here on the left side that was blocking it from getting properly seated. So now that it's fully screwed in, just put our face plate on and make sure we have the right tip and our screwdriver. And that's it. The GFCI we just showed being hooked up is the easiest method to do, where you simply have one cable coming in and you just attach it to your line terminals on the top. Now, if you're doing an outlet like this one, where you have two cables coming in and you end up with two hots and two neutrals, you're gonna have to figure out which one is the line and which one is the load. Now, the easiest way to go about this is simply detach the hot and neutral from the same cable and put a wire cap on them and then put your receptacle back into the wall, turn your power back on and see if you have power. If you have power, then that means that the line cable is still hooked up, which means that the cables that you unhooked are the load. If you don't have power, that means you have the load hooked up and the line has been detached because there's no power coming into the receptacle. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and identify two cables to undo. I'm just gonna undo one of the cables and I've decided to follow this cable here and that happens to be this black wire and this neutral wire. Now preferably when I hook things up, I like to put the cables um, on their respective sides. So if I had this cable, I would have done probably the bottom this one and this one, and therefore the other cable would be on its matching side up top. So make sure you pay attention to the where these wires are coming out of the cable and you don't just go with the top ones because that doesn't mean that they're on the same cable. So here we go, I'm gonna, since these are pushed into the back, I need a flat blade. There we go, there's one. And there's two. I'm gonna verify, I'm gonna get these out of the way, verify I got the correct one. And as you can see, all the wires currently feed back to the same cable and the ones I just took off feed back to the cable over here on my left. So what I'm gonna do now, put my caps on to the ones 
that are loose. Now you can put them back in the wall if you want. Um, I'm just gonna leave them and just keep them out of the way over here where they can't touch anything. I'm gonna push my outlet back in. We're gonna go ahead and secure it back into the wall. All right, and now I'm going to I'm using a outlet tester. Now, if you don't have an outlet tester, you could simply plug a nightlight in. Anything that just requires power and that you have some way of knowing if the power is on. Now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna go down to the breaker now and I'm gonna turn the breaker back on. And if this lights up, then I know that I have power and so currently my line is hooked up or it doesn't light up, which means that the load is hooked up and that this is my line cable. Okay, so I determined when I turned the power back on that the line was still connected and that these two wires are the load. So now I know how to hook up my GFCI correctly. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and uninstall the outlet again. I'm gonna remove those wires from the back. I'm gonna make sure that they stay separated from these two so I know which ones are which. And then I'm gonna hook them up correspondingly to their correct positions on the back of the GFCI. Okay, I'm now ready to hook up to my GFCI. So I've got my line cables right here. I'm gonna do them first. Go ahead and secure them. Yep, they're good and snug. Okay, at this point, since I am gonna have the load hooked up, I'm gonna remove the sticker covering up the load terminals. Take off my wire caps. and plug my load wires into my load terminals. Last of all, my ground wire. Double check everything's nice and snug, not gonna pull out. And I'm ready to reinstall my outlet into the wall. Okay, two outlets are now completed and installed, and that also covers two of the methods for hooking up a GFCI. Now there is one final method remaining, and that is to not use the load terminals, but still use uh, two cables with a total of two hots and two neutrals. Okay, for the third and final method, now that I had the old receptacle out of the way and the wires are loose, what I would do is I would go ahead and twist together my two hot wires and then twist together my two neutral wires. My ground has already been done, but if it were not, you would twist those together as well. And then you would add a pigtail. So that's just a short piece of wire that you would then tie into each of these respectively, and it would go to the terminal. So you would end up with these tied together, and then that pigtail, that single wire at that point, would go to your terminals on your new GFCI. Now, the way I would do this, once you go to hook it up, is I would only tie them together to the line terminals on the GFCI. Even though my line and load wires, or cables, I should say, coming into the box have now been tied together, I'm just gonna tie them all into the line terminals on GFCI. Now, what this would do is that the power would come in, and if this GFCI were to end up uh, turning off, basically, if the if you do the test button or it detects an anomaly and it ends up flicking that internal switch and turning itself off, the power at the GFCI would be off, but because your wires have been tied together back here, there's still, wire, there's still power going down those load lines. So whatever outlets are downstream of it, they still get their electricity. So this GFCI would only kill itself here and not turn off everything downstream. So, in this case, I'm going to use that for um, my garage. Since my garage has everything downstream of it, it goes to these bathrooms upstairs, and that's just very strange for the garage to control that, especially when it's like over 100 feet away from the bathrooms. So I'm going to wire that garage so that it cannot turn off my bathrooms up here. All right, once you're done installing your GFCI, the last thing you need to do is after you turn the power back on, You'll notice that if it has a light, it's still off. And that's because when the factory sends these out, that they are internally in the off position. So you're not gonna have any power right now. So don't freak out. If you turn your power on, you go to plug something in and you don't have anything working. It's because you still have to press the reset button. 
There you go. Now you do have to have the power on at the breaker for this to be able to work. If it's not on, then the GFCI will not respond to the reset button and so it's not gonna reset. So turn the power on the breaker, press your reset button, your light will come on. If you have um, any other outlets downstream, go ahead and just make sure that they are also working properly too. And then if you want, you can test it, press your test button, power's off, and then press your reset button again, power's back on, good to go. If you liked this video and found it helpful, then give us a thumbs up and click that subscribe button. And we'll see you next time on the DIY Grunt.